Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's your girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. So, I'm going to be continuing this video from where I left it. I reacted to about 30 minutes of this, and today I'm going to be doing another 10. I hope you guys enjoy. If you haven't subscribed, uh, subscribe now and yeah feel free to suggest anything that you guys want me to react to and i'll be more than glad to react to it so today i'm going to be reacting to our quran a miracle of miracles i mean do that so without wasting time let's get into the video adam Hazrat adam alayhi salam he was made by god every dog pig and donkey was made by god as such allah is the creator, sustainer, evolver, he's Rabbul Alameen. But Jesus is not like that. He was begotten, not made. And if words have any meaning, what does it mean? They're attributing to Allah Bari Ta'ala an animal nature, the lower animal functions of sex. So Allah reacts very strongly in Surah Maryam. He says, وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَنُ وَلَدَا And they say that Ar-Rahman, the merciful God, has begotten a son. Allah says, لَقَدْ جِئْتُمْ شَيْئًا عِدَّا is one of the most abominable assertions one can make. The worst swearing you can give Allah is this. The worst swearing. You want to swear Him? This is the worst thing that you can say. That Allah begot a son. You are attributing to Him an animal nature. The lower animal functions of sex. At it, the skies are ready to burst. And the earth to split asunder. And the mountains to fall down in utter ruin. And the walada. That they should say that Ar Rahman, the merciful God, has begotten a son. The worst swearing you can give Allah is this. That if the heavens had feelings like you, O oh Muslims, and Muslimah, if the heavens had feeling emotions like you, to hear such words being uttered, he said, the heavens would have fallen. If the earth had feelings like you, it would have split asunder and the mountains fallen down in utter ruin. Such horrible swearing they give Allah. Does it move the Muslim? Not at all. It's not moving anybody. It's an amazing thing, an amazing situation. You see, the non-Arab world, the Muslims of the non-Arab world, 90% of the Muslims of the world are non-Arabs. They don't know Arabic. We have been taught the Quran to read parrot fashion. We read it. Sometimes we read far more beautiful than many Arabs. Some of our Hafiz and Qaris. But we don't understand a word. So we read these beautiful verses. We don't know what Allah is saying. But the Arab world, more than 100 million of you, you understand what Allah is saying, what He's crying about. And it doesn't move anybody. This is an amazing situation, amazing thing. If any of you, my brothers, you go home and your mother tells you, he says, you know, this guy next door, he was swearing me like this. I won't use the words. You know, what the other guy was swearing your mother. Or your wife says, you know, this guy next door, you know, he was calling me names. I'm asking, can you eat? Can you sleep? No. What do you do? Say, I want to go and break his jaw, shut him up for good. And if I'm too weak, I say, I hire a gang, somebody to do the job. Now it cost me 10,000 dirhams. I'll do the job, shut him up for good. No? That's what, how much you feel for your mother, your sister, your wife, your daughter. And yet we say that we love Allah more than all these things. And yet when they swear him, they abuse him, what happens? Nothing, nothing, no reaction. You know why? The spirit is gone out of us. We are the living dead, the living dead. We are on the Sirat al-Mustaqim, but we are a dead people. We, have, we are dead on the right road. The outsider, the enemy, he is on the wrong road, but he's alive. He's alive on the wrong road, we are dead on the right road. <laughs> so Allah reacts. Allah reacts. The worst swearing you can give me is this. What are we to do? I said, talk to them. Reason with them. I don't say go and break the jaws. I don't say go and shoot them, kill them, cut the throats. No, no, no. Allah says, Udu ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati. Invite 
all to the ways of thy Lord with wisdom. Wal hasanat, and with beautiful preaching. Wajadilhum billati ahsan and reason with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. And I show you, show you some little ways, little ways. I go to the West. I go to England. I go to America. I talk to them. I says, you know, English is a foreign language to me, which it is. It's a foreign language. I acquired this, you know, from, because they conquered my country and I went to a British colony, so they taught me English, so I learned English. If the French had conquered my country, I would be speaking French. If the Spanish had conquered my country, I would be speaking Spanish. But you Britishers, you English-speaking people conquered my country, so you taught me to speak English, so I'm speaking English to you. But look, it's a foreign language to me. I want you to help me with your language. You say, you say, you say in your catechism that Jesus is the only begotten son. Begotten, not made. I say, will you please explain to me what you are trying to emphasize? You are trying to tell me something special. See, I can call any young man here, my son, my son, and I'm sure you won't mind, the child won't mind it, nor will the father and the mother mind it, calling your child my son. But if some person, not knowing our relationship, wants to know, is he really your son? So then I have to tell you, no, you see, this young man, I like this little child, he reminds me of my son at home, my grandchild at home, so I call him my son. And he loves me like a father, like a grandfather, like an old uncle, so he calls me uncle, or he calls me grandpa, whatever. That is a relationship. But instead, if I said, yes, he is my begotten son, you know what I'm saying? What I'm insinuating? Horrible. I'm insinuating that the child is illegitimate. He is not his father's son, he's mine. I'm responsible for his birth. The worst swearing I can give him is that. If you know the meaning. So I just want to know, what you are trying to emphasize. That's all. What you are trying to tell me. Please explain. And wallah, I tell you, you won't come across an English-speaking person who will explain to you. There's no harder blow you can give him than to plead with him. Please explain what are you trying to tell me. What do you mean when you say begotten, not made? What are you trying to tell me? How did it come about? Tell me. The nearest, in all my experience, the nearest to an explanation came from an American. See, the American is very militant. Now he is. We must give him credit. He is a fighter. And a fighter is good material. He is the best material to deal with. Not diplomats, you know, beating around the bush and cutting, and cutting favor with you and patting you on the back. Hypocrites. No, no, no. Let's have a straightforward a fight, an intellectual battle. And the American is good for that. He's a man. So an American, I had him, you know, with some people as visitors to the masjid. I, am, I happen to be one of the guides to the largest mosque in the southern hemisphere in my town, in Durban. And while I was guiding him, this subject cropped up, and I asked him the question, this question, because I was asking everybody, nobody answers it. I'm asking him, this American. I said, what do you mean says, when you say begotten, not made? Will you please explain? He said, yes, it means sired by God. So said, what? He said, no, no, I don't mean that. But you ask me what it means, I'm telling you what it means. <laughs> now you see why Allah reacts. Now you see why he reacts. Sired is an, a term used in animal husbandry. You see, they keep pedigrees of horses, and they tell you the father of this horse and the mother was so-and-so, and the great-grandmother of this horse was so-and-so, and the great-grandfather was so-and-so, and on and on. Pedigrees of horses, pedigrees of cows, bulls, the pedigree, so where they originate. Who was the great-grandfather of that bull? Where did it come from? The Brahman bull, it came from India, you know, a hundred years ago, and from that grandfather we got this, then, and, 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 and this is his great-great-grandchild. Child. Pedigree. They use this term in animal husbandry. Sired. This bull was, this cow was sired by a certain bull. That's what it means. This is actually what it means. Now, it is the Judaism. Now, that term, father, is not in the Quran. Beautiful word. 
but it's not there. I said, that is a miracle. The 99 names are miracles. But he said, look, if you want to discount them, discount them. The miracle is that the commonest, the most readily available, the one that is being dangled before him for 23 years, he doesn't catch it. And he makes us to eschew that word. Don't use it. You see, Rabbul Alamin. He's Rabb, he's Rabb, he's Rabb. He's not Ab, Ab, Ab. Miracle. Substance of the message. Allah says, another example I give you. Awalam yaral lazina kafaru. He says, do not the unbelievers see. These atheists, these agnostics, the people who deny the existence of God, can't they see? Uh, quite interesting. Like I said at the beginning of my video, it's a continuation and they're still talking about um, the terminology of certain things in holy books. Uh, what exactly, for people that want to go with begotten son of God, what does that actually mean? Um, does it mean he's a special person or was a special person or what exactly? And I mean... People, like I said in my previous video, not previous video, the video um, I reacted to of Amit Dat is um, I can say or use a certain words that may mean something else to the person that's watching this video. So begotten here, what exactly does it mean? Do we all share the same meaning or we all apply it as we like and the like? And another thing is, so if someone swears at you, but you don't have time to invite them to um, maybe teach them about God, how then should you respond, be it in a public place or whatever the case, and how should the approach be exactly? Otherwise, um, uh, the same point you made in the other part of the video I reacted to is the same point he's trying to make here but if you guys have any contributions feel free to comment down below and I'll be more than glad to read what you guys have to say about this what you have to say about the term gotten what you have to say about someone swearing God and just that um, the ambiguity surrounding Jesus as a human being also um, terminology so yeah see you in my next reaction video